the next topic that we are going to say is variables during program execution values of variables can be changed this is one characteristics of variable during programming we need to perform some operations where the values of a particular token need to be changed continuously so for that purpose we use this token variables variables can be of different data type the data type decides what are the operations that can be performed on this particular variables and what is the size of the variable the variables values are stored in memory and at the time of execution different operations are performed on them in c variables is a data name used for storing values its value as i said earlier its value may be changed during execution of a program and for each and every variable will be giving a name that name should specify that name should have give some meaning for that particular variable for example if you are going to sum two numbers then the va value of sum will be stored in a variable and that variable should have name as sum here i have given some examples for variable names here we have rules for defining variables first it must begin with a character okay and uh, you can you should not give any blank spaces but you can give underscore in between the variable names next you can just see the length mostly the maximum size of your uh, variable name should be 8 characters but your ansi c standard recognize maximum of 31 characters no variable should be given name using the keywords we have seen some keywords the tabular column the no variable should have a variable name which is equivalent to any one of the keyword and variable name can be combination of upper and lower case characters but you should be clear the uh, it is clear that the capital a is totally different from the small a both will have different values coming to the next point no variable should start with digit it should start with character it should not start with digit these are the rules for defining variables next we are going to see data types there are three primary data types one is integer next one is character next one is float and we we are just going to see these things in details the classification of your data type integer are classified in two forms one is short integer and next one is long integer similarly it is also classified as signed integer and unsigned integer the character data type it is classified as signed character and unsigned character the float data type it is again classified into float and double float and this is consolidated form you can just see the character its size is 1 byte and it ranges minus 128 to 127 and format specified which we will be using in most of our uh, formatted output and formatted input functions and it will be percentage c and this is uh, this mostly we will be using in c programming language and unsigned character is next data type it is also size 1 byte and you can just see the value ranges from 0 to 255 it also has format as specified as percentage c the next one is short int you can just see the size is 2 byte and the value it ranges from minus 32768 to plus 32767 you can either use percentage i or percentage d as format specifier next one is unsigned int it also have two bytes and the value ranges from 0 to 65535 but in your book it is wrongly printed as 655355 uh, okay you just please modify that and uh, the uh, specifier that uses percentage u next one is long 4 byte information and range the value is displayed here and you will be using the format specifier as percentage ld okay for unsigned long this also 4 byte the value is given here and here uh, you will be using uh, format specifier as percentage lu coming to the next one floating it is uh, it will it is capable of storing real values or decimal values and the base data type is having 4 bytes in 4 byte size and the values are displayed here and you can either use percentage f or percentage d g 
and more frequently we will be using percentage f next one is double and long double and double the size is 8 bytes long double the size is 10 bytes and you can just see the format specifier for both the things you will be using l f percentage l f these are the data types and format specifier and the range of this thing data types now we are going to see how we are going to declare variables the declaration should be done in declaration part of the program in C there is there are some sec sections include section declaration section global declaration sections and main function definition inside main function you will be having local function declaration and after that the description or uh, the inline coding of the main function so, so you have different parts we are going to see the we uh, structure of uh, we have already seen the structure of programming so all the declaration should be in the declaration part the declaration provide two things one is it inform the compiler the variable name next one it also specifies the data type of the variable because of that the compiler will allocate memory the required memory for the variable and the general syntax is like this first you will be giving data type and that will be followed by a space then you need to give the variable name we have added some examples next we are going to see how we are going to initialize the variables and initializing variable is variable declaration with an assignment operator and after that you will be assigning a constant you can just see the syntax first you need to give the data type and that will be followed by the variable name and the variable name should be followed with an assignment operator equal to and this will be followed by a constant and each and every uh, statement variable uh, declaration statement or initializing statement should be terminated with a semicolon the next thing that we are going to discuss is operators in order to perform different kind of operations C uses different operators and an operator indicate an operation to be performed on data that yields value now here we have this is a consolidated f table okay what are the types of operators that we have first one we have arithmetic operator, second one relational operator, logical operator, increment and decrement operator, assignment operator, bitwise operator, comma operator and conditional operator. And to the right you can just see what are all the permissible operators in each classification or in each type that you have. For example if you are going to per perform arithmetic operation plus, minus, multiplication, division and mod. Out of this plus minus multiplication division which we will be uh, so the operations will be similar to uh, what we have learned in our mathematics but this mod operator there is a percentage symbol it has some special uh, operation that it will uh, upon performing division of two values it will just return the remainder that is the uh, purpose of this operator next you have relational operator this to compare greater than or less than or equal to greater than equal to less than equal to or not equal to or operations are performed in relation operator next you have logical operator it will perform and or and not operations and you have these are the basic operators which you can find in almost all the compilers next you have something called increment and decrement operator plus plus and minus minus suppose you want to perform one operation you want to increment a value of variable by 1 what you will be doing a equal to a plus 1 instead in C you can use a plus plus the equivalent will be a equal to a plus 1 similarly for decrement you can use minus minus next is the assignment operator the equal to is the assignment operator which we have and next one is bitwise operator bitwise and bitwise or bitwise not and uh, right shift left shift and tilt okay these are the bitwise operators which we have next is comma operator this is used to separate the variables and uh, the uh, format specifier and variables and between the variables you will you'll be using the comma operator the last one is come conditional operator this operator will check the condition if condition satisfies that uh, the block which is just before the colon will be executed if the condition is not satisfied then the block that is after the colon will be executed this will be discussing uh, all these operators and uh, the 
operations we will be discussing when we discuss some examples in the programming. The next topic that we are going to discuss is input output functions. The input output functions are basically classified into two. One is formatted function, next is unformatted functions. In formatted functions, you have one classification that is input function and you will be using the scan of. Next one is output function, this print of. In unformatted functions, again you have two things. In input, you will be using get ch, get char, get s, get che. In output functions, you will be using put ch, put char and put. These are the formatted and non-formatted functions. For each and everything, we will discuss one example. Now, example for a printf function. So, this particular code which is displayed here, you can just type it in the editor and you can just have the output. Now, you can just see first statement. It is hash include stdio.h. It is standard input output header file. Why we need to have a header file? See, most of the compilers support different operations. And for most of the operations, you have the prototype. And these prototypes are stored in header files. Why we need to have the header files? See, uh, under the compiler what they did, they classified some operations according to uh, their uh, uh, according to their uh, operations and uh, what is the result that they are going to yield. For example, the mathematical operations are grouped and their prototypes will be available in math.h. And all operations related to your mathematics uh, will have functions and those functions will be available in math.h. Similarly, all functions related to string operations that will be available in string.h. And all functions related to input output that will be available in stdio.h. So only if you include this particular header file, the printf or scanf function will be recognized. So the compiler will be able to uh, execute this particular program. So that is the purpose of this include files. And after that we have the first statement, the entry point of your C program, void main. And inside this I have initialized a variable along with the declaration int x equal to 10. Next I am using printf. You can just see in double quotes I have given the percentage d. This informs what is the variable type that I am going to display and the data type. Okay, the data type will indicate the variable, okay, which is on the right hand side is of this particular data type and this will be having these are all the characters that is the variable will have these characteristics suppose the variable is integer data type you will be giving percentage d so in output also you will be having integer value integral value that will be displayed so since i have initialized x equal to 10 the value 10 will be displayed now we see one more example for printf for displaying character see you can just see in this particular program i have assigned value as 65 okay and I use the same variable in the right hand side in format specifier. The first one I used percentage D, the second one is percentage C. See, uh, the character internally it will store the ASCII value of the characters. So when we print using percentage C, okay, it will display the uh, actual character which is uh, having the value 65. Now you can just see here the capital A, its equivalent ASCII value is 65. So I have assigned it to the variable AX. When you use printf statement inside your format specifier, if you are using percentage D, it will just display 65. If you are using percentage C, then it will display A, capital A. Similarly, if you use 96, it will display, if for percentage D, it will display 96 and for percentage C, it will display small a. So this is how the printf function works.